they'll potentially follow you back, which is unlike what happens on Facebook. Because if you follow, you know, a, a, someone like, I'm just going to throw out of the name, but say Damon John uh, from uh, Shark Tank, he ain't going to follow you on Facebook. You can't connect with him on Facebook. You can't connect with him on Twitter necessarily. But here, they, everybody seems to want to connect with everybody. It's like, you know, between COVID and Clubhouse, it's like what everybody's starting to like have this, you know, young world. We want to connect with each other. So it's like, hey, man, you know, uh, and see how you can use it later. Um, it doesn't hurt, you know. So let's find those contacts. So I'm, I'm beginning to like, I'm probably this week, I'm going to come up with a plan for how I can use Clubhouse, what to do, what not to do. So I'm kind of working on that. So I'll share that with you as I start to work it out. Okay, cool. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think it's going anywhere. I just have to figure out like the time spent into this thing with everything else already moving forward, things in motion. You know, you don't want to jump on this dangling carrot when you got a couple of birds in hand already. But at the same time, it's a platform where there's a lot of influential people there. It's free and it's wide open right now. I don't want to I don't want to miss the boat either. So, for example, your literacy film festival would be a good group to start and then invite people to it. It kind of come in with, you know, not so much a, a, a totally worked out objective because you never know where it's going to take you. But hey, actually, that I'm glad you brought that up because this morning I just got off the phone with Final Level Music and they came on as a as a sponsor of it. invited people to the room and then we talk about we talk about what is a literacy education look like and just like you know begin to make contacts in that world so that's a that's a very specific one that might lead somewhere right? yeah definitely because the the reason final level music came on is because i was talking to han g and I said, look, this is the Financial Literacy Film Festival. And right now, there's not a major bank. There's not Bank of America, Wells Fargo, Chase. Somebody's not on this yet, and they need to be. So, so we're in position to have a major sponsor for something like this. And the content is nationwide. It's edutainment. It's a, it's a perfect time for this. Yeah, so that would be one. The other one that I would suggest for you that might be a good room to start in the next week or so is uh, together with the folks from the uh, from Africa about African film and involve those people and let's do a conversation and that one will blow up. Trust me. That well, a absolutely. I'm in talks right now with Rootflix and the African Film Festival with the founder of it. And we're trying to work something out for the 2021 season of the marketing because, you know, uh, Fulton Film Company did their 2020 season marketing. So he's trying to bring us back on board for, for this year's. And so that's de that's definitely a room I can open up easily. Yeah, so what I would say is, why don't we, uh, this week, why don't we come up with a plan to do one for both of those? The third one I would suggest, if you want to, and this is a little bit maybe less uh, in your control, but it could be a good one, is if the head of the, your, your boy, uh, George over the Asian World Film Festival, if you wanted to do something with him on that that's the third one that could also blow up yeah so, I'm, I'm glad you mentioned that i was thinking of him uh with the asian world film festival and then also uh mark bovey with netflix and impact releasing would be a great room talking about film distribution yeah exactly and, 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 and veteran content so those four why don't we put together uh, plans for doing rooms on those four and and then you know, then we'll figure out a day to do it that makes sense, and we'll and we'll, and we'll jump on. I'll invite people. You invite people. You know, and, and once again, where it goes, it goes, and what will come out of it is you'll make new contacts, new people, new ideas, new uh, new uh, relationships that might help push all those forward. So, you know, that would be how I would see uh, to do this clubhouse thing and, and make it uh, valuable. Okay. Okay. And Sounds then, good. You know, and then at the same time. You know, that puts you in a position of, um, you know, because there's two pieces to this. One, you, and, and both of them are, are okay. 
it's just different. One is you're a uh, participant just going in and, and learning, and that's cool, and we should do that. But then the second one is you're a moderator, you're a leader, you're setting up these things, and you're bringing people in, and now you're coming from a position of, of leadership with these uh, different four projects or whatever, and now new people come in, and you get to do that from from being the moderator and bringing people together and start to open up new doors. Yeah, definitely. I, I know I have the contacts just, just by working with Henji for the past month. Whenever I bring in somebody like Aranda Badiki and he knows everybody she knows, but they don't know each other. Exactly. <laughs> now you start to connect and then people start making the connections. Yep. And, you know, and, and, you know, you got you to gotta balance it in. You know, some of these people, they go on and they stay on for like 15 hours straight. Oh my I'm God. Not, I'm not into that. I just can't do that. But, you know, um, so you just got to figure out what makes sense. Some people say, well, I'm going to open up the room. I'm going to do a room and I'm going to do it for two hours. And you, and in two hours, you shut it down. But other people, it's like, well, because the room keeps growing, they're like, well, I'll stay on as long as there's people on. Well, you'll always get people. So you can stay on for 35 straight hours. So. Which, well, I like I like how you're describing it because then we can schedule. I can even do promotions on the Fulton Film Company page, a short video saying, okay, guys, Tuesday is this show, Wednesday is this show, this is the hours, this is when we're doing it, and that's that. It's a show, it's a scheduled thing once per week for that one room, and then there's some hype built for it. Exactly. Now, remember, you have to you have to bring on people. It's, at the moment, it's only iPhone people. You can't do it with an Android, so mm -hmm. you can't invite people who don't have iPhones. Yeah, understood. Because not yet. Uh, it'll it'll change soon, but in the meantime, it's just the iPhone community. So uh, that also tells you a little bit about the community because people who buy iPhones are different than people who buy Androids. It's just a different you know mindset of uh, what technology you choose to use. Mm -hmm. But eventually, it's going to expand and then be an even bigger community. Yeah. But in the meantime, it is what it is. And then you got to if people are not on Clubhouse because it's invite only, like I have five invites that I, uh, it's up to five again for me. I've invited people, but I got five more. So I'm just figuring out what's the five people I want to invite to this. And then you may have invites now that you can use, but, um, you know, you start inviting the five key people that you want to bring into this community and, and invite them and then see how we can expand it. And those four uh, groups are good. And then I'm going to do some on some other issues. I'm just kind of working through them what I want to get out of it and how to do it, you know, cause, uh, uh, it's growing and it's interesting. And, uh, you know, I, I've been on a couple of film ones, like yesterday, international film distribution, which was a fascinating, uh, a conversation. And once again, I connected with some new people and then, you know, just got to figure out how to do it to integrate it into everything else we're doing. Yeah. Yeah. That's the thing is, uh, I have a very, a uh, very focused track right now with with about 10 projects and I know this thing's really really helpful but I don't think my energy can jump directly to that unless I get the consultation first unless I have the person who's smart enough who who, who knows how to make this thing monetize as quickly as possible or who's already monetizing this particular platform and then I just take the consultation and then I take that lead but me trying to wrap my marketing brain around it. I have a million ideas and I can get pulled in every direction because my creativity is limitless. You know, I, I can think of anything to do with this. I love it. And so I'm like, no, 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 no. I can't let the George brain run wild on clubhouse. I got to figure out who's already making money a certain way and just stick to the script until I naturally fall into whatever I'm going to fall into on how I use it. No, I agree. And that's, that's the whole thing. Cause you know, cause part of it is just, I think there's a part of it that's educational where you just like if you go on to a, a, a room that's about, um, you know, uh, social media branding. Right. And so if you don't know um, and there's people at top of the game there, you learn. So it's part of it is free education. You can get free education from the top people in the industries of each industry. A second part is entertainment because some people are on because they're bored and they got nothing else to do. And so they're just being entertained by this information, mm -hmm. which is cool. And then third is like people like us who are in positions of, you know, how do we take advantage of things to create stuff and monetize them and create projects. And that's a little bit more focused into, you know, uh, what do we want to get out of it as opposed to how do we want to waste our time? 
Well, well, yeah, I mean, we have to be very intentional. We're, we're entertainment business professionals, and this is an entertainment business platform, which allows us to connect with people who might be trying to connect with us. We're giving them an opportunity as well. Yeah, and there's people that we would never be able to connect with before now that we can connect with because of this platform, at least for a while. And, mm -hmm. and we might as well take advantage of it. Um, yeah. So let's figure that out. I mean, I'm starting to you know, work through some of that. I've invited some some people on the clubhouse and it's just uh and i haven't spent you know a, a bunch of time i just jump on occasionally grab some stuff and then move off again because you know i got little things i'm trying to work on um but it's definitely you know like i'm thinking for like my books now i got two books who can i connect with on here who are literary agents who can i connect with on here who are publishers so i'm like you know being very intentional that mm -hmm. i need to find those kind of connections and i got to do a little bit more uh, work and homework to figure out how to be more effective with this. But it's uh, it, it's a opportunity here for us, so we might as well use it. Yeah, you, you, know don't, I mean? you don't want to look back in 10 years and be like, oh my God, that was so simple. Why didn't I see that? <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, if, when, when things pop, you know, it's like, mm. and I have to say, like, say, you know, like if we had bought Bitcoin 10 years ago, and bought like a thousand dollars worth, we'd have a lot of money right now. But we did it. I yeah. did it. You know what I mean? So it, Hey, it, it damn sure was offered to me. Yeah, well I, somebody you know, I, somebody did offer it to me and I was like, oh man, I don't know. Yeah, maybe <clears> I saw it and I went, Yeah, I don't have time for this and, and then you know you missed the opportunity, but it, it, it's okay. There's more there's more opportunities you but you just gotta and this is clearly an opportunity for us because we're networkers, we're influencers, we're, you know, um, film people, we got everything. We just got to think about it. We got to go on to the next part. So far, I think it's a, it's a pretty damn good tool um, for what we do. Yeah, definitely. I agree. You know, and, and the event thing is really special because as I've gone through uh, all these uh, uh, different rooms and watching rooms it isn't really i haven't seen anything yet in the vet space and veterans so that's something i think we definitely can jump into with mark bobey and into uh, dude i'm ready to i'm ready to get that one going because i don't know another independent military veteran producer independent producer who's also a veteran who's produced as much content as me or who's been involved with as many big marketing efforts like the Asian World Film Festival, like Root Flicks, like the African Film Festival, all these big things. And, and so, yeah, with me, with you, with Bovi, with the flag, there's there's too much great stuff here. Yeah, so we maybe, you know, let's, uh, today is, is Monday. I have a, it's not a crazy week for me. I got a little bit of uh, stuff, but let me let me think about, um, and I don't know if Bovi's on yet. If he is, if not, we'll, I will invite him. I'm not sure if he is or is an Um But definitely, let's uh, see if we can do a room this week around that. For sure, that and that that'll be our, you know, coming out so to speak. We can start there. If you said it, we're making it happen. All right, let's do that. That's okay. That because I, because I think that would be a good one, and um, you know, then we can invite people to it, and then. You know, we can see what comes out of it, and then we'll sum that up after the session's over. We'll sum it up and say, okay, what else? How can we take this even further now that we've had this experience together? Absolutely, let's do it. Lock it in. All right, that sounds good. And then uh, I'll let you know if if there's a way, and I'm hoping there's a way. Um, if if it comes together, and, and I, you never know, you know how this is. But I just got back from. Um, uh, Sacramento and, and uh, Davis County and all that for this feature film up there that my buddy's doing. I'm going to line produce it and it may go fast. And if it goes fast, that would mean I'd be up there in about two weeks putting it together. And we would see that in April. So if there's a way I can bring you on to that, I will. Um, oh, perfect. Bring you, up, bring you up there. Because there's a lot of things that I could use. You know, and, and we may play multiple hats, but just to help uh, pull this film off. You, you know me, I'm all around filmmaker. I'm, I'm the best production assistant, uh, and, and I, I give really nice massages if needed, Mr. <laughs> Duffy. <laughs> I may need drivers. I may, you know, I may, cool. get, you know, I may get you as a driver. I may get you, with, I don't know, you may wear a couple times. I'm, I'm versatile. Yes. 
so uh, you know i've already uh, you know dropped your name and i thought about you obviously and um so you know we'll see what we can do because it's a cool little project and it's uh you know, if it goes, we'll be shooting for probably at least uh, four to five weeks, um, probably five weeks. It's great. And, and we're going to put everybody up at a hotel up there in the casino. And um, so, you know, it should be interesting. Okay. So, I'm and, looking forward to it. I hope everything works out and uh, and we yeah, get to create the, something. I hope the financing comes together. You know, I mean, it always comes down to the financing. Yep. But, you know, we, uh, you know, I've already laid, I went up there, helped them look at locations, uh, set up the amount of uh, hotel rooms we need. So it's a work in progress right now. I'm just hoping that the financing falls in place. Okay, perfect. Yeah, yeah man. Uh, with it, that, but let's do a uh, thank you for coming on and making this happen. You just gave me a little more push on this, but let's, let's aim for this week. Um, I'll check with if Bobby's on or get him on. And then let's uh, look at maybe, uh, you know, maybe Friday. Let's uh, let's see if we set Friday as a, a, a two or three hours. Let's say let's say three hours. Give ourselves three hours. Not that we have to go for the whole three, um, but that's our window of opportunity. And then we'll we'll do it and see uh, who comes on, who joins us. And then the other thing to think about is what what do we name the room so it's attractive to people who both know about it, but also people who may not know about that thing, but they want to find out because it's you know so let. That'll be the other thing. What's the name of the room? Entertainment business, film distribution, bridging the gap, veterans and civilians, anything. Yeah, we're just focus. Uh, this one, we're just focusing on veterans and film. Maybe. Okay. You yeah, know, exactly. Whatever. Veterans and film. That's perfect. Yeah, or maybe we, you know, the only challenge with that, maybe we'll say military veterans and film because we say veterans. Well, I like both. No, I like it because as a double meeting, because if you've been in the, if you're Duffy and yeah. you've been in the game, I like that. film and maybe we'll uh, also uh, put it out best for Netflix so we give it that that we throw that name out there so it, it links it to the, the two I like that um, I like that so why don't we uh, think about that we'll reach out to Bobby this week and then uh, I'll go through Duffy he's probably doing push-ups or something I lost him he got so excited, he's just started knocking out push-ups. Come on, Duffy. Well, there it is. Are you there? Are you back? All right, man. I, I, I lost you on the audio. I thought you started doing push-ups because you got so excited. Hey, I'm ready to go to the gym right now. I'm going to Gold's gym, man. I'm, I'm going to be yep. over there in a few minutes. I freaking knew it. All right, man. We'll talk soon. All right. Take care, brother. Peace. Bye. Is that Mr. Fuentes? Mr. Fuentes, come in here. Well, you're on live video. Okay. Hold on, let me pull my stuff. Come on in here, bro. So that was Mr. John Duffy, film producer, Hollywood. He wants to start a clubhouse room. You see the clubhouse? Now we got David Fuentes in here. He's the executive producer of one of the films from the Financial Literacy Film Festival, which you had noticed John Duffy earlier mention. Uh, we are just on the phone with John Duffy nice. and he's in Hollywood and he's talking about doing a clubhouse room about the financial literacy film festival. So he can track like a, a big finance sponsor That's awesome. and you just happen to be here, executive producer of one of the films. And basically the, the platform for the FinLit film fest is edutainment. It's education and entertainment whoop, in a narrative story. And David Fuentes actually was the only one who did some sort of documentary thing, which tells his story coming from El Salvador and now working as a, a professional here in the state of California. So uh, really, really amazing uh, stuff to connect. And we're all about connecting people. We're all about uh, educating people about many different things. You have, to, you have to use your creativity all the time. Most recently, we did the Alien Show. Yes awesome so this guy's interested in aliens and ufos why because he had a sighting uh in high school at some point and we did a little podcast show a little youtube video about it you can watch the first one we're gonna we're gonna record the second one today but don't limit yourself don't don't think hey i just have this job i just work at wherever so that's just me don't let your little environment that you go to every day define who you are uh you guys you you were just on a 
you, you got to witness a live phone call with me and Mr. John Duffy uh, from Hollywood and we were on Clubhouse and we're, we're entertainment business professionals trying to figure out what is Clubhouse? How come people only with iPhones can get it? How come it's invite only? How do you start a room? Well, that's a lot of stuff to know, plus have all these projects and everything going on and try to fit that in. But if it's an opportunity, we have to do our job. We have to do our due diligence to investigate this opportunity to make sure, is it really an opportunity? So we were talking about, John Duffy's not a young guy. You know, he's, he's, he's when you meet him, he's like, you young at heart. But, but, you know, my dad always said, hang out with people with white hair or no hair. So I don't know how you qualify. <laughs> I got white hair. Oh, okay. Shaved. You just shaved, shaved it off. Then, then that's your qualification. But he's on Clubhouse. You wow. and, and like you would notice a 20 year old or a 25 year old or a 30 year old, you know, up on game. But this guy, he's a film producer. He's like, George, how are we going to monetize this? How are we going to be intentional on this new platform when everybody's not on it yet? And you're like, he, he's an early, early adopter. That's good. It's urgent. And sometimes when you know you have your office over here next to the studio, I'm hearing you talk to people, explain what you're doing, everything. And it's like. The stuff you're explaining are old concepts. Yeah, pretty much. You don't even have to be an early adopter. No. <laughs> and, and still people are like resistant. Yeah. So it's like, the point I'm trying to make is you might be resistant to change and that's just in your own head, but the world's already changed. So, you know, like like the financial concepts that you talk about. Yes. It, you, that's not, that's Albert Einstein stuff. That's like old news. That's like from a long time ago. Yes. And people are still resisting it. Like, no, that's change. It's like, no, homeboy it's only changed for you in your own life, but the world's, you're not an early adopter to this new concept. It's been going on for years. It's going, been going on for a long time. A long time. So I'm trying to show, like, here's a guy like you who believes in the long time strategies, the proven methods. Yes. And then here's a guy like John Duffy, who's like the forward thinker, always like, ah, oh, what's, what's new? What's going to be the early, early, early thing? <laughs> but so what? We've come together yes. with the Financial Literacy Film Festival. Because both things make sense. Yes, absolutely. It's the edutainment, it's the education and the entertainment coming together. And that's what I'm trying to inspire people to do is like, you don't have to just be your environment. You don't have to just, oh, I got to go to work today at my place. So that's who I am. I'm just, I'm the truck driver. I'm the whatever. I'm, you could think beyond those limits to start to create another reality for yourself. Yeah. A lot of people, a lot of people are stuck in their bubble, you know, and that's, that's reality, you know, and usually the bubble also determines how much income they create inside this bubble. When they burst that bubble, there's so much more out there. It's just incredible. And I was one of them guys. I had a bubble and, you know, this is where I was at. And I didn't go any further than that. Wasn't thinking outside the box or outside the bubble. And then I bursted it. Man, life is just incredible. That, that's, I never heard it put that way, <laughs> the bubble. And that, that's what I was trying to say is like you have your own little thing, but it doesn't have to be just that. Yeah. You could change that at any time. Uh, that was cool, man. This was unscripted. I was on the phone with John Duffy. You just happened awesome. to show up and, and we're doing this. This is what we do all day long. Personal growth, professional growth, improvement, uh, iron sharp, sharpening iron, just going back and forth. Like that's our job, <laughs> right? Yes. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> A lot of people don't, you know, like they say, you got to brainwash they call it brainwash, but realistically, it is brainwash. You got brain, to gotta wash your brain out of whatever mentality you have before. So it's mm -hmm. pretty wild, man. A lot of people say, oh, you're getting brainwashed. No, you got to wash your brain, too. So you got to clean it. Yeah, when, when I was transitioning out of the military, everything I did was like, oh, that guy, no. he. Uh, everyone was, oh, uh, because they're not doing an army <laughs> way. And I'm like, people are like, oh, somebody finally used that phrase on me. Yeah. Oh, your brainwash. Like, no, uh. And then I was like, wait a minute. Okay, maybe I'm not brainwashed, but I have been conditioned to do right. things a very specific way at a specific time in a specific manner. I'm like, but I'm not going to call it brainwashing. <laughs> like, no matter what, no. I was just conditioned, okay? But yeah. that was my way of being yeah. nice to myself. And then I, because of that, like, knowledge of, like, having that insight, I got to connect more with people who were formerly incarcerated. I'm like, wow, they don't have a chance because they have to live a certain way when they're incarcerated. Yes. Now you come out as a civilian, just like a soldier, you had to live a certain way. Now you're, you're out here as a civilian, you're like, oh, go live. And it's like, I need to wash my brain. Yeah, <laughs> I need to wash my brain. That's me too. I was in the same position. I had to wash my brain. I had to get brainwashed. You know, it's like going through a cycle in the, the laundry, you know, you got to clean your, clean your clothes and you come out super clean or thinking differently. It's pretty cool. 
it takes a long time to create new habits. Yes. It takes a long time to get rid of your old habits. And here's what sucks, you guys. When, when you have an old habit, it, usually, it was usually learned because it helped you at some point in life. Like you create it as a defense mechanism, you create it as a whatever, your facade, because it helped you get past some point. But you might be past that point in life now. Or you just you, you created that, that habit from a trusted or a loyal person taught you that. So you're like, if I change the way I think and I don't think like that anymore, then I'm not being loyal to this person who taught me that. But maybe that thing they taught you was out of love, which, yeah, we can respect that. But it's, it's not the right thing anymore at this point in your life. Yeah. What do you think? Yeah, absolutely. It makes a lot of sense. You know, a lot of people, a lot of people, I don't know. My, I had a, I had a friend, um, he passed away, um, from overdose. Oh man. Sorry but hear that. yeah, but, uh, I still remember his mom used to tell him like, Hey, you got to watch who your friends are. You know, a true friends are not going to tell you to drink and smoke and do drugs. Right. But yeah, they call, we call those friends cause mm. we go hang out with them and drink and smoke and they're bringing you down and they're bringing you down. Um, where in my case, I used to tell him, Hey, don't drink, don't smoke. Right. Who was, who, then he didn't want to hang out with me. Cause I wasn't telling him the things that he wanted to do, but mm. the things he should have been doing. Yeah. Yeah. You know, who's the real friend there? Like it, it's cr crazy you, mindset, man. You don't want to hear what you know you should hear a lot of the times. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. mom, you should tell him like, Hey, your, your true friend is David. I was like, wow. Yeah. You know, and I did, I just did it out of love because I love the guy, you know, like, hey, you should stop drinking. You should stop smoking. It's not good for you, you know? Yeah. And yeah, caught up to him. We don't want to hear the stuff that we need to hear a lot of the times. And that's why this morning, that's how this original video started. That's how this original call started. John Duffy and I, he's been my mentor for a long time from Hollywood. So when I have a chance to kind of hit him. I thought I was going to hit him and, and call him on clubhouse this morning and get him like, haha, we started a room and you're not doing nothing. He's like, Oh yeah. Then we got to get the Netflix show. We got to get to this show. We got, he's like 10 steps ahead of me. And I'm thinking I'm getting him. <laughs> I didn't want to hear that. I wanted to be like the smart guy, George, the marketer guy, like, look, Mr. Duffy, look, we, we should be doing this. He's like, yeah, 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 kid. <laughs> We're doing this and this and this. And, <laughs> and I'm like, Whoa. So you, but I had to put myself out there. I had to try to challenge my own mentor. I got a little, a little slapped around this morning, but that's okay. That's okay, right? But it happens sometimes. I want to be, my father taught me this all the time, try to be the dumbest guy in the room all the time. And I know that's true right now, so that's cool. <laughs> if you're the dumbest guy in the room, for sure, if you shut up, you will learn stuff. Absolutely. 100%, right? 100%. Right? 100%. Yep. And if you're a smart dude, here's the thing. My dad's like, he's like, I'm not saying you're dumb. If you're, if you consider yourself to be a pretty smart guy and you're the dumbest guy in the room, damn, that's a good room to be in. Absolutely. <laughs> like, that's like, you can only go up. <laughs> all the way up, bro. <laughs> like, and I thought, wow, that's empowering. Thank you. Yeah, it is. It's pretty incredible. Man. And, and, and if you have, if you have a low self-esteem, if you have low self-confidence, you have to work on that because those are the things that are going to lead you to try to be the smartest guy in the room all the time. Cause it makes your boost your ego to have a bunch of people who are kind of a little bit less educated than you around all the time. I know people like that. It, it's not good for personal growth. It's not good for professional development. It, oh. It's just not, you've kind of hit the law of the lid, right? You've kind of That's stopped right. at some point. Yeah. They always say you got to hang out with people that are better than you all the time because you know you hang out with five that are smart you're going to be the sixth smart guy in the room you hang out with uh, five guys that are wealthy you're going to be the sixth wealthiest person in there yeah so yeah, yeah. Just, like, law of attraction you know i don't know what you call it um you saw i got the, the closest universe. office to you bro yeah, i'm like hey the, the universe <laughs> i don't know man how words are powerful so you always got to tell yourself hey i want to be one of the top guys or i want to be you know in the room with the smartest people so i could be one of the smart ones it just happens that way all right, I'm going to ask you a question. Some people don't like this question, yeah. but it's about competition. Yeah. It's about competing. Oh, my. Okay. Uh, That's my trigger word. <laughs> oh, my God, dude. Yeah. I didn't even know it. Yeah. I didn't even know it. But I want, I want to ask you, who, who is your major competition? Don't say yourself. Who is your major, who is your major competition? Who do you always want to compete with? Who do you, does it change? Who do you compete with? Who's your competition? 
you think I compete against everybody? Ouch. Everybody. And you're looking at me in my face yeah, and you're telling me that, bro. <laughs> <laughs> so, so it's funny because if somebody says, hey, I could do 20, 20 jump ropes. You're like, 40? Like, yeah, 40. Well, 25, right? <laughs> they come in, I did 30. Well, I'm going to do 35. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so a- anything. In anything, um, anything. Competing in anything. Yeah. I'm super competitive. <laughs> if you eat fast, I'm going to eat uh, faster. faster. <laughs> and, you know, everything, everything. It's kind of kind of my little, that's my trigger in life. If you really want to like get to me. It's, Your it's spice. Common. You love the competition. I love it. That, okay. that drives me beyond anything. But, you know, I prefaced that with some people don't like that question. Yeah. And when a person, when I ask, hey, who do you compete with? Give me a name. What do you compete with? Don't say yourself, but what, who, what drives your, comp- your competition, your competitive edge? What drives it? When people get nervous, when I ask that, in my mind, I'm like, they ain't got it. <laughs> that was my answer. Everybody, I compete against everybody. My shadow can't walk in front of me. Dude. That, that's what I'm talking about. But when people have answered like, oh, no, not me. And yeah. they get nervous. I'm like, ooh. No, th- think th- about this. My shadow cannot walk in front of me if the sun's behind me. Dang. I tell it, get that's behind rude. me. That's rude. Yeah. Shadow <laughs> cannot walk behind me. That's rude. Right? And everybody's crazy, George, because everybody says, I'm not competitive. You were born. What do you mean? Out of a million and million. I don't know. All these sperms. Yes. A lot of oh, sperm. A lot, a of, lot sperm. of sperms. You're the <laughs> one that came out. So you're, you're competitive. Super competitive. Yeah. You just don't know it. Yeah, it's you crazy. started out competing. You started off competing. Start off competing. In, in the universe inside. You start out competing. Yes. <laughs> right? And you guys are like, all the little things are swimming toward the top. And, everybody and you else made it. And you made it. And you made it. For some reason, you made it. Yeah, we're so all competitive. You won the first competition. You That's won your right. first race. Yes. That's pretty cool. It is. <laughs> you won your first race. Yes. Okay, you're in the game. You yes. got a W to start your universe, start your life. You got a W. Okay. Yeah, it's pretty wild. So competition drives, man. Uh don't be afraid of competition. Don't be afraid of it. Don't get don't be, don't get complacent. Don't get comfortable. And it's not about don't confuse this with gratitude, okay? This is one thing that I don't like. Some people take the fact that you're competitive and say, like, you don't have the gratitude. I don't know. But it's like, no, I have so much gratitude for the things I have. I want more so I can give more and do more, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. Hard to explain that to somebody who has nothing. Yeah, it is. Um, you know, you got to have goals, too. Like, okay, I'm going to be competitive and hit my goals, but what are you going to do with those? at the end like you know yeah the why why i'm doing this i'm so competitive because i'm trying to do so good over there and add value there and do all these things but i can't do that over here with just what i got yeah absolutely you know like one of my goals is uh you know very competitive but at the same time i want to you know start a gym a non-profit gym for all the kids in madera or fresno or wherever where they come in for free you know and just train and develop you 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 know what's a trip you know what's a trip in puerto rico in Puerto Rico, in the municipos, the, the municipalities, they have a free county-sponsored boxing gym in every county, in every municipal. That's awesome. Man. And you know who hangs out there? Guys like David, mentors, just dudes who are just boxing, trying to keep the kids off the streets. It's, it's a free thing. I'm like, how do we not have this figured out in the 50 states over here? And, 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 and Puerto Rico's got this thing. I'm like, oh, man. And they're not funded the way they should be. So I hope the business people in Puerto Rico, the small business people, some way, somehow can figure out a way in every county to fund these things and keep them going. Uh, especially now during COVID, I'm sure it's worse and worse, but I love to see that. When I was living there from 2015 on, I love to see those things. It's like, what an amazing thing. It is, man. It's incredible. It's incredible like, when you can change somebody's life that way, you know? It, why can't we have a, uh, it's like a YMCA. Yeah. It's so cool. Uh, Yeah, man. So that's great that you're doing that. And one ounce of mentorship could completely change the trajectory of somebody's life. Yeah, absolutely. My friend, uh, Jake Rademacher, he does this uh, Brothers at War Resiliency uh, Military Veterans kind of a workshop. And he, in his workshop, he describes hitting a golf ball. I'm saying this because I know you play golf. And he says, if you, if you hit a golf ball, just one degree off, over, over a certain amount of time, where you end up is significantly different. Big time. 
And so that's what he's talking about positivity or your trajectory in life or leadership or mentorships. Like if you just make that one little pivot, that one degree change now, maybe, maybe it's going to take a long time, but in a long time, you're going to end up somewhere way more different than you would have been. Yeah, absolutely. So true. So true statement. I love that. It was just like an easy visual thing for yeah. me to get it. I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah. Good one, Jake. Yeah, if you haven't golf, go out there and hit the ball and you'll see why. Yeah. I'm like, <laughs> boom, 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 boom. Ah! <laughs> you don't want to take uh, me out there. I had a, I had a sergeant in the army when I was stationed in Korea. He would be like, come on, George. I was 18 years old. He's like, we're going out to the golf course. I'm like, golf? What the hell? Like, I don't want to go out there. And, and he kept Sergeant Fisher. God bless your heart. He's from Louisiana. Great guy. <laughs> Took me out there so many times hitting the ball, hitting the ball. He kept, he, he even kept trying to adjust me, teach me. Like, I'm like, why, why does this guy care? And, and, you know, he's like 37 years old. I'm 18. He's trying to teach me golf in Korea. Like what? Come on. I didn't get it. But many years later, when I was living in Newport beach and I was still in the army, now it was golf day and all the rich people are out there on the, on the, on the golf course. And it was time to play golf. I'm like, Oh, Sergeant Fisher, God bless your heart. <laughs> but I never learned because I didn't have that insight at 18 but he saw some potential in me. He must have seen something in me. It was like, this guy needs to know this game because he's going to be out there with these types of people. I knew that's what that meant on that day later. Sometimes you don't realize it when somebody shows you love and, and like is like trying to invest in your potential. You're like, no, no. Like you're standoffish because you've never had that before. Yeah. yeah. yeah sometimes you got to let, you got to let people help you, man. I mean, you got to let them guide you and you know, it's funny because when you call certain people and you want to change their life or help them, um, they, they shine away from it. That, that's what I was doing. And I was in the army and he was my sergeant. It was the perfect situation for me to say yes and learn. But still, I was like, ah, oh, it's the weird human nature part it of is. it. It is. That's what it is sometimes. I'm so mad at myself, dude. Like, <laughs> like, like I was pushing away the best opportunity that was ever presented to me. And this guy years in advance saw that he knew I wasn't going to go out there and rub elbows with rich guys right then and there. But he was like, based on how this kid's talking, based on other 18 year olds, I see something in Ohan. I know he's going to be out there doing stuff. Let me teach him this now. Let me gift them with something. And I refuse the gift. And I still, till this day, don't know how to play golf. And, and it's foolish. So now you're my new golf teacher. Let's do it. I'm you know tomorrow. what I mean? Dude, somebody like wanted to do that. Like, I always feel like, damn, he was trying to give me something. And I was just like, punk 18 year old didn't understand what it was. <laughs> Yeah. Have you ever come across something where, where you really believed in a person and it was sad that they didn't even realize their own potential? Yeah. Yeah. All the time, man. It's crazy. All the time. Well, I'm 45 years old. So yeah, I've, I've come across a few of those. Yeah. And you know, sometimes you got to guide them towards the right thing. And sometimes you got to guy, try to guide them towards the wrong, you know, like, Hey, get away from that. Yeah. Get away from that thing. Just yeah. to use this energy to stop. Let, yeah. Let's stop your, yeah, exactly. If you're slipping down a mountain, you have to stop the sliding down the mountain before you can start climbing up. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty wild, man. You guys, this could go on all day. Professional growth, personal growth. One thing leads to another, whether it's entertainment, financial literacy, just, just talking, just relationship, bridging the gap. Uh, Mr. Fuentes is a civilian. I'm military veteran. And through our conversations here, we're growing and we're learning. And if you're a military veteran, you should find a civilian friend who helps you transition into this life because you're about to be a civilian for the rest of your life. So if you're only hanging out with veterans all the time and thinking like you have the right track and the right way of thinking, it might not, your perspective might be a little bit off all the time. So I love you guys. And hey, David, is it okay if I post this on YouTube yeah, absolutely. and Facebook and everywhere in the universe? Yeah, let's do it. All right, cool. All right, Thank guys. you.